I'm Amanda, and this is Not Your Granny's Quilt Show. Welcome to today's episode. I'm so excited to have Lacey Messerly of Messy Quilts and the Grateful Thread podcast on the show today. Um, if you remember back to last year, we had Ashlyn Downs on the show and she is Lacey's sister-in-law and they do the Grateful Thread together. So um, I wanted to grab Lacey on the show just because she is a quilter. She's a great long armor. She does t-shirt quilts and has done some occasional commission quilts for clients. And so um, anyway, I loved chatting with Lacey. She's um, another millennial quilter trying to bridge that gap between traditional and modern and find where she fits. And it was just a lovely, lovely conversation. And I really hope you guys enjoy it. So let's get into it. Calling all fans of the show. Did you know you can get merch? That's right. You can get Not Your Granny's Quilt Show merchandise. If you head to nygqs.printify.me, you can shop merch from the store. You can get a t-shirt. You can get a mug. You can get a sticker. You can get a sweatshirt. You can get a tote bag. There's so many great things, so many fun items to choose from to show your love for the podcast. So head on over to nygqs.printify.me today. Are you a patron yet? Have you joined the Not Your Granny's Quilt Show Patreon? Well, if not, you can head over there now to www.patreon.com slash not your granny's quilt show to become a patron of the show. If you decide to join as a paid patron, then you will receive a not your granny's quilt show logo sticker as well as early access to the week's episode. So go on over to patreon.com slash not your granny's quilt show and sign up now. You guys, I'm so stoked. I am an affiliate for Carly Porter's graffiti quilting class this upcoming fall. So if you've never heard of Carly Porter, you need to go check out her website, carlyporter.com. She invented graffiti quilting and it looks like so much fun. I'm signed up to take her class this year because... Free motion long arming has always been on my radar and something that I've wanted to learn. And I cannot wait to learn with Carly. She's got years and years of experience and she just approaches quilting from a completely different angle. And I love her energy and it just looks like so much fun. So when you head to carlyporter.com and sign up for the graffiti quilting class that starts in September, when you use NYGQS25 at checkout, you'll receive an extra $25 off of your sign up fee. So head there now, sign up for graffiti quilting and learn how to put beautiful art on your quilts with me. And now back to the show. Thank you so much for joining me today. How are you? I am doing pretty good. I uh, had to, I was in the basement and then decided maybe I'll come upstairs where it's nice and bright. So I have a quilt ready to go on the long arm. Ooh. Sneaky is what we Ooh. see here. So that's what that is. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I love your background too. Oh, thank you. It's my tiny garage office. We call it the garage office because it's a teeny tiny office we built in our garage. <laughs> and then I just made my husband redesign it or redecorate it so all these curtains like right behind me is the door to go into the garage oh that's great are they Ikea um no actually I think I just ordered them on um Amazon or something but it's great so yeah thank you thank you thank you it's kind of a labor of love and it's my little (laughs) cove to my editing and recording cove which is nice so (laughs) Isn't it all of it? Like, isn't all of this like a work in progress all the time? Oh yeah. Constantly. Yeah. I'm like, what other quilt could I make to hang on the wall? Cause I kind of want to bring this one back in the house. And he's like, you're going to make another quilt. I'm like, yes, get out of my way. <laughs> <laughs> Just to hang on a wall. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But well, I'm so excited to have you. I, it was kind of funny as we were like scheduling this, you were like, oh, should we get Ashlyn? And I was like, no, she's already been on the show. (laughs) Love you, Ash, but. (laughs) We do love you, Ashlyn, but we can separate in some things. (laughs) Exactly. It's like, no, let's let you be your own person and then we'll have you two together some other time. (laughs) Yep. That'd be really fun. Yeah, exactly. Well, I'm excited to hear your story. I, we just barely met in person. I mean, I bit just barely met most people in person at QuiltCon, but (laughs) I was so excited to see you guys. And so this feels fun that we get to actually sit down and chat instead of just like run across each other in the madness of QuiltCon. Yeah. It was a little maddening. It was a little crazy. I'm actually really glad too, that it was after QuiltCon did, because didn't we record, didn't we schedule it 
before, before QuiltCon for after. And I was like, I need to get through QuiltCon and then let's talk. And so yeah. I'm yeah, glad we did too. that because that yeah. it was quite the adventure. <laughs> yeah. Same. Yeah. And it was my first time too. So I was just like, my brain was like, ping oh, it was your everywhere. first QuiltCon? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I tell people it's like drinking water from a fire hydrant. It is. And then you take days to dry out. Yeah. It's, you know, yeah. nothing can prepare you for it. No, <laughs> you really, you just, it's, and it, it's like that with, you know, I felt that with like uh, teaching. It's like, you think you're, you're ready. You've done your student teaching. You're like, I can manage a classroom. And you get into your first classroom and you're like, I don't know anything. <laughs> what is going on? I read everything I thought I needed. And now yeah. yep, I'm yeah. making it up as I go. Yeah. <laughs> I think I read that it was the most recorded attendees. Did it end up at 10,000 or 14,000? I heard 14, I think 10,000 was their initial estimate Yeah, based on how many, like, you know, early passes they sold but then after the day passes of people coming and buying them on on the day that they came it ended up being like 14,000 it felt like 14,000 people it did it really <laughs> felt like it I was like I'm yeah. sweating <laughs> right. I was like I can't take off my sweatshirt because then people won't know it's me <laughs> my mom was like okay <laughs> I think she was sick of me by the end of that trip but that's yeah. okay I think everybody was sick of everybody. I don't think I've talked to Ashlyn much since QuiltCon. I'm like, we'll touch bases in two weeks when we get rejuvenated. So I'll see you later. <laughs> you know, it was so funny, but it was, it was so fun, but yeah, it's very overwhelming if mm -hmm. you've never been and never experienced it. Even I, I'm sure like it is overwhelming no matter what, but yeah. that first time is like, holy crap. I was so tired. <laughs> well, it's a group of introverts trying to be extroverted for a very short amount of time so <laughs> which is also very it feels so awkward I'm like you know? I have these like ideas of like who I'm gonna be when I walk through the doors and then I'm like nope I'm still just me <laughs> say, like the wind's blowing and I'm like yeah. you're gonna recognize me now it's just it's yeah. me recognizing everybody else yeah like oh my gosh there's that person I'm fangirling you yeah. Uh, yeah no I'm glad I gotta actually meet you in person yeah that was really fun I was really excited um okay well Let's start from the beginning because yeah. I want to hear about you and your quilting journey oh, and wow. where it all began. So, yeah. Um, so I grew up here in Utah. I'm based in Utah. Um, I was born in Idaho, actually. And then uh -huh. I, yeah, I moved here when I was two. So I've lived here my whole life. Yeah. And I lived in Sandy. So I haven't really moved anywhere outside of, you know, Utah. And I, I think like most of us, like we were, I was very crafty. I have one sibling, only one sibling. He's five years younger than me. So I was the only girl in the house. And I remember in my early teens, you know, life, I would, I learned to cross stitch, loved mm -hmm. to cross stitch yeah. at the time as well. It was in the nineties. And so, um, the wood signs became really popular, <laughs> yeah. but that was before the cricket machine. Oh and so yeah. I hand painted signs, right? <laughs> like, and yeah. I hand painted like the home sweet home. And like, that's what I gave for gifts for Christmas was, you know, these wood signs that had like a border around it and hand yeah. painted. And I mean, they look cheesy now, but that was, you know, kind of my outlet of like creativity and my first thing as far as like arts or anything like that. And so, mm -hmm. um, I did cross stitch and painting. And then, um, in, in my late teens, that's when scrapbooking started. And in Utah, it was scrapbooking Mecca, right? Like yeah. the, the, we had scrapbooking conventions, just like quilt con, it was scrapbooking all the things. So I had all the paper. In fact, I think I still have like totes of just like paper and like printables and all the things, you know? Yeah. And so I, and I, and I did band in high school. And so I was never, I was never the sporty people, the person I wasn't mm -hmm. into sports. I was definitely towards the crafts, but again, it was the nineties and my parents did the best they could. They just didn't know how to nurture that artsy side of me, you know? Sure, yeah. So I didn't really, I didn't take art classes. I didn't do anything like that. And, um, and so after I graduated high school, I was working at the grocery store and I just kind of like didn't really do anything. And then you're in your twenties and I'm going to college and trying to figure out my life and, um, all of that creativity, just, I never really did anything. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just, my years from 20 to 25 were just kind of like, you know, figuring out my life. And I met my husband at 25, which is late for Utah, you know, like, <laughs> a little bit later for <laughs> Utah standards. And, yeah. um, at the time my, my mom and dad had gotten divorced and my mom 
started quilting. She's like, mm-hmm. you know, I, I love this hobby. It was kind of her outlet and what she was going through, but I didn't have really the capacity to really do anything at that time. Cause again, I was in my early twenties. So met my husband and then sure enough, a couple years later, I get pregnant with my first kid. Mm-hmm. And like a lot of us, suddenly I, instead of working all day long, I'm sitting at home with two babies and what am I going to do with my life? You know, what yeah. board, what am I going to do? And that's when I approached my mom and I said, Hey, can you teach me how to quilt? Just like many of us. Right. Yeah. Um, and so my mom at when I was about 31. So in 2015, that's when I officially opened my Instagram. I, you know, I told my family, like, I'm going to open this Instagram account and anything that I do for quilting is just going to be on this account. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that's kind of how I started. I started with my mom and, um, she just, she really started teaching me and it's funny because I look back now and the first thing she taught me was two inch by three inch flying geese. That was the, the first one. thing yeah. I, it took me like five years to even learn how to make flying geese. <gasps> yeah. She, she literally was like, okay, we're going to make this, this pattern. And I'm like, okay. And like, and they, were, I mean, and they were yellow and bright pink. Right. And Ooh. they were little and I rage quit right? Like, yeah. I, I'm like I, <laughs> this is so hard for me. Like who does, who does flying geese for their first block? You know, that's bonkers. It was pretty bonkers. Bless your mom, but oh my gosh. <laughs> well, and, and people who know my mom knows that she is very, she's very traditional and she's an extraordinary piecer. Like mm. she, her points are, she's type A. Mm-hmm. So I'm type B person over here. That's a little bit more of a people pleaser is learning from a type A person. Like, <laughs> Yeah. Doing little two inch flying geese. I'm like, I, this is terrible. Like I am <laughs> not doing this. I don't know how people quilt. And oh so, gosh. um, yeah. So in, uh, in 2015, when I'm like, okay, you know what, I'm going to try this again. Like, let's start from scratch. Can you just show me more? Can you show me basics? Can we like yeah. go back to the beginning? And I need so, to learn what even a seam allowance is like <laughs> you, before I'm doing it, flying geese. Yeah, for sure. And I think like beginners forget that. Like you forget as a beginner what you have to learn, you know, yeah. you don't know what yeah. you don't know kind of. And so I, we went to a local quilt store and they had a kit on the wall that was called, I think I actually have, it. I should grab it. It's that quilt right there. It's the, and this was literally my first quilt, like squares on oh, squares. Perfect like though. Little, yeah. This little lobster quilt. That's really and, cute. And that's when I learned, right? Rows and columns. Mm-hmm. And it was at that point when my mom like had told me rows and columns that it, it clicked in my brain and I'm like, oh, you make blocks and then you sew the blocks together. That makes sense. Let's do this. Um, yeah. So in 2015, I started block of the months and would go to my local quilt store and get your block. And then, yeah. So for about five years, that's what I did was just really learn the traditional way of quilting. Wow. Kind of cool. Mm-hmm. While my babies were little, right? Like yeah. I had a newborn and a two-year-old and just would kind of sew when I could at the very beginning in 2015. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Wow. What an intense way to learn. I think if I, I mean, I kind of had an intense intro to quilting too, because I decided to make a huge, a twin size quilt as my very first quilt, like <laughs> no bias seams. It was all like the, I, do you know the yellow brick road pattern? I think I have that one too. Yeah. I think that was one of my first ones too. Yeah. Yeah. And cause, and my friend Jen was like, Oh, it'll be so easy because it's all like rectangles and squares. Uh-huh. And it is easy if you're, if you have any idea what to do. And maybe if I had made a baby size, it wouldn't have been so bad, but it literally like from start to finish, like we got to her house at like 10 AM and I didn't get home until after midnight because we were like, they're like, you're going to finish this quilt top today. And I was like, am I (laughs) awful? Anyway, hold on. I have to sew, I have to cut this apart to then sew it together, then to put it together again. And it's still not done because then you have to get it quilted. Exactly. Yeah. I was like, I went home and sobbed. I was just like, (laughs) what is going on? (laughs) Oh my gosh. Well, and okay. So then you had your little babies and you were just kind of sewing as you could find time. And so was there anything like, was there anything in that process that really like stood out to you that made you go, oh my gosh, I can like 
like that push your creativity or was it just more like focusing on the skills and like the basics of like, I'm just going to make this because I know it's going to help me learn. And yeah, um, that's a good question. I, I was making stuff just to learn. And again, it was, you know, two thousands I'm, I'm 40. And so I'm right in the middle of where I feel I learned traditional quilting and then there's this modern movement. Right. And mm-hmm. so in, even just in 2015, the MQG was still really new, like QuiltCon mm-hmm. had just started, all of those things had started that I didn't really know about. Yeah. And so I was making quilts because I make quilts to gift people. Mm-hmm. That's, that's why you make quilts. That's how I was taught. That's how my grandma taught me. That's how my mom taught me was, why would you make a quilt for yourself? Mm-hmm. The only time. And so for the first couple of years, it was all my friends were having babies. So you make a quilt. That's what you do is you make quilts. You make charity quilts. I did block in the month. I did classes. I guild hopped Mm -hmm. and it just was never, it never was in my mind of, oh, I can make a quilt to show people. Mm -hmm. I can make a quilt to keep for myself. Why would you do that? Because this is an art form. You have to gift it. You gift quilts. And I don't know if it's just necessarily the Utah culture in that way Mm -hmm. Um, it's like you know you're you get your quilt from your grandma like that's all you do is gift it and so up until 2020 so the end of 2019 that's all I did was really learn techniques Um, a lot of the blocks I learned were very traditional Um, Mm -hmm. like I said with the block of the month those can be very traditional um, quilts and they were fun but it wasn't until the end of 2019 that I was like well, I like this pattern, but I wonder if I did this with it, what it would look like. Mm-hmm. And I purchased EQ8, the mm-hmm. um, quilting software mm-hmm. and started playing around that. I thought, oh, I wonder if I can make my own quilts. Yeah. It kind of like uh, sparked, I'm getting more creative fuel out of this now, more than just technical. So my yeah. technical learning was very slow, I think, just because mm-hmm babies and life right. things. Mm-hmm. and I so we ended up going to Pasadena quilt con in 2018 mm. so I've been quilting for three years and that's when I was like whoa this is this is bigger than I think I realized yeah because my world in Utah is very saturated with quilts and quilting mm-hmm. in the traditional sense yeah and it kind of opened the world and I looked at quilt con it as this this is for other people other mm-hmm. people do this. This is not, I don't think I could do this, you know? And so yeah, that's kind of how the roots started. So, wow. Yeah. I feel similar. Cause I'm 38. So we're like, we're really close in age and that same kind of like, and I think I've kind of brought it that point up before, but when I've seen the memes around, but it's like millennial women are struggling because we were, we've got like one foot in traditionalism and one foot in like modernism. And so we're like, housewife raising babies but also like boss babe like you do you boo like girl power and so (laughs) it's like this super hard like dissonant thing to hold in your brain and so and it's the same in the quilting world you're right it's like this weird mesh of like modern and traditional and trying to find where to fit in all of that and like so yeah I I feel that deep in my soul boomer parents that don't want to communicate on the phones and communicate, you know, FaceTime, yeah. or they don't want to text you. And then you're raising your children on how to be on social media. Yeah. Like how, right. <laughs> this generation is very interesting of how things are going to move forward because yeah, yeah it's definitely how it felt. Yeah. Um, so then like everybody, 2020 hit, right. Mm-hmm. And I, uh, I rage quit, you know, like I think I, I look back at 2020 and realize that it probably hit me more than I think creatively. Mm-hmm. Um, people were asking me to make masks and, oh, you, know, yeah. you know, I'll pay for it. And I'm like, why would you pay me for masks? This is really dumb. Like, I'm not gonna yeah. charge you who charges people for masks, you know? And I, right. and granted, I would see people charging for masks and then uh, all the people that were making them and making a ton of them, they were making money on it. And so I kind of, sewed masks. I kind of did a couple things, but for the most part, I, I shut the door for 2020 and just like my kids were in kindergarten and, um, no preschool and first grade when Mm. COVID hit. And so, um, you know, homeschooling Mm -hmm. granted little, you know, my kindergartner and first grader was only half day, but still it was suddenly like this, like anybody, all the scheduling and all the, 
everyday stuff came to a halt. And now I'm like, what am I doing with my life? And it went back to, I have to be with my kids 24 seven. I I don't have time to quilt at this point. Yeah. 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 It was, I think because of the American culture, it's like very just, well, you just got to keep moving forward. And so I don't think we've properly allowed ourselves as a whole or just even as individuals to truly like process and understand how traumatic that year was. The last four years have been like, (sighs) I even think about it, like we're coming up on, you know, basically the fourth anniversary of the big shutdown, like everything closing down. And like, that was the time when we were supposed to go see our oldest, like graduate from basic training from the air force and like, go have this big celebration with him just to like land in Texas and be told, no, everything shut down. And we were like, what? Like, we thought we were trapped in Texas. Like we were so scared. It was such a scary, scary time. And like our kid, we couldn't see him. And like, it was the first time we hadn't seen him for that long on top of the fact, knowing that we weren't going to get to see him at all, let alone like having no real idea of when we'd get to see him as he moved through his time in the military. But which is crazy to think there's a lot of people who had a lot of different experiences. Cause I do, I just told my husband that this week that, you know, my kids were little, it was preschool and first grade that really, you know, and then when my kids went back and the masks were mandated through the school, it like, they were little. And I just think like the families who had these seniors and sophomores and having to deal with that, it's just devastating. Like I can't even imagine how all of that hit like it. Yeah. I think you're totally right in the fact that nobody's really healed from any of that at this point. And it's it's like, and you know, and, and drove a lot of people to find something to do to quilting, to yes. crafts and whatever. So it's like, we saw this huge boom in quilting, but it's like, for those of us who had already been in it, it was kind of like a weird, like, I don't know the word that like the it's word sad. dysphoric keeps yeah. like popping in my head, but I don't even yeah. know if that's a real word. So <laughs> we'll see. Anywho, we'll fact check that. Yeah. Yeah. We'll fact check it later. <laughs> I'll tell you if I was wrong, but just like, dystopian I guess is kind of how yeah. it felt just like nothing like was real no creative yeah nothing was real there was no creative bone in my body which but like you said there were a lot of people that came out of that going wow what is this I have this outlet and for me yeah. it felt daunting like right. I'm in survival mode my kids are home mm-hmm. and so I sat through so it was 2020 and then in May of 2021, my um, brother-in-law came to me and my nephew was graduating, which again, it was like the first year of COVID and stuff. And so yeah. he's a big football player and he, they came to me and said, Hey, I would love for you to make a t-shirt quilt. And I'm like, I've never made a t-shirt quilt, but you know what? I have nothing else going on. It might be something good to like jog yeah. my life and all the things. And so in May of 2021, I made my first t-shirt quilt and it was one of the best experiences. I love it so much. Every part of it is just so great. Cause it's like putting a puzzle together. Right. Yeah. Um, and I kind of was like, Oh gosh, this is, this is kind of fun. Like I kind of love this. Um, mm-hmm. in the meantime, Ashlyn, my sister-in-law was doing, um, her antique quilting, mm-hmm. uh, her to take antique quilts and make things from it. Yeah. And so I would, shop antique stores kind of for her but kind of like to see if I could so I I would say in May of 2021 it's like what do I want to do with life do I want to make t-shirt quilts do I want to do vintage quilts I had an Etsy shop I like I had like all these things because yeah. it was like I want to do it all <laughs> you right. know um so that was May of 2021 and then in August of 2021 I had a client reach out to me on Instagram and say hey I see you're a quilter I have this idea for a quilt would you be willing to make it? Mm. And it was a pixelated quilt. It's my lips quilt is what I call it. And I'll send you a couple pictures. Um, It's called my lips quilt and it was pixelated. And I was like, and this is super cringy. So don't come at me. (laughs) But I told her, I said, you know, I wanted to get back into quilting. This is going to be a good way to like, um, kind of get back at it. Send me the fabric and I will do it for you for free. Cause I just was like, I, yeah. I just like, I wanted to get, I wanted to do it. It was a cool concept. Um, and so her and I collaborated and made this quilt 
is pixelated of lips because it's for her son who had like a gap tooth and so she designed it and I from there and that's what really kind of was like suddenly I'm like this is not your modern quilt this isn't what I learned all those years ago this is cool yeah (laughs) Um, and then that's kind of when I started springboarding off. I think I really like this new way of looking at quilts while keeping my traditional roots. And so, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. It was really fun. For free. Um, yeah. So that was <laughs> 2021 was the lips quilt. And then in March of 2022, um, I had people asking me about the t-shirt quilt cause I had posted about it and do you yeah. do t-shirt quilts and can you do it? And that's when I thought, you know, I should just get a website because people are asking me the same question over and over again. So right. I'm just going to like here. So I opened my messy quilts.com in 2022 and it's messy for Messer Lee. My last yeah. name is Messer Lee. <laughs> um, and so March of 2022 was really full of t-shirt quilts. It was mm-hmm. really packed. I was not prepared as a business owner. I took way too much on. It was way too stressful. Um, and in the meantime, I didn't have a long arm. Um, mm. I was sending my quilts out to long arm. Oh, wow. And, you know, like I think, I think anybody in the quilting business knows it just kind of feels like a slow burn and it just kind of like you make decisions as you go. Yeah. So of course that's when it led to going to my husband and saying, look, I'm spending money on this quilting for something that's really simple for these t-shirt quilts. I think it's time to get a long arm so that I can have the long arm to do t-shirt yeah. quilts. And uh, so I bought the long arm in September of 2022. Um, And then, yeah. So then from then on, I've just kind of been, I didn't get the long arm in an idea of like, let's be a long arm quilter. That wasn't really my intention. It was more like, I love the t-shirt quilts and I love the ability to have it in the family. Ashley's a quilter. My mom's a quilter. The family's a quilter. So to have a little bit more freedom on what I want on my quilts yes. was kind of the turning point. So, yeah. Well, yeah, that's kind of, and then I just kind of feel like in 2023, Ashlyn came to me and said, Hey, I think we should start a podcast. So we started the podcast last year. And then last year was my year of commission quilts. I ended up making five commission quilts, four for that same lips qu- client, another one for a different client. And so now, coming full circle, I'm right to the point where I'm trying to figure out what I want to do. You know, like what's my, am I doing this? Am I really doing this? Or am I, you know, what am I doing (laughs) with my life? So yeah. Yeah. That's my whole story. Wow. That's so fun. And like, it's, it's crazy how like things just evolve all the time. And like, you're, I think if you're a person who is open to growth, like you're going to hit those points of like, kind of a fork in the road almost and just like okay which way do I go now it's that's just how you stay as a business or you don't if you decide yeah. I'm done with this and this path is has, is at its end and I'm ready to do something else yeah. then that's fine too but I think just as a business owner like you are always in those loops of like okay this thing ran its course now what do we do <laughs> yeah. this thing ran its course now what do we do this thing ran its course now what do we do so you're like yeah you just hit these like crossroads and like okay like and this. I will have, you know, I did end up charging that client. We, yeah. I, after the first call I went to her and I was like, look, I can't, I can't do this for free, obviously. And got a, you know, a contract in place and things. And she still hired me for a couple last year. And I think that's where I'm at now is mm-hmm. I love doing commission quilts. She mm-hmm. would send me the fabric. I would follow a pattern yeah. send her quilt. And it's these, it's her heirloom quilt. She's like, I'm literally, she doesn't know how to quilt. Yeah. So I've made these quilts for her, but I'm kind of right to the point where I'm like, okay, that was fun. I, I really loved it. And the money was great, but I think it's time. I, I still haven't made anything for me. I'm putting a lot of creative energy into something that is leaving my house. Mm-hmm. And now I think it's to the point where I want to go back to what do I want to make? Yeah. What do I want to see? What's going to come out of me while mm-hmm. running a business of a little bit of long arming, a little bit of t-shirt quilting to keep the, keep the money coming in for fabric. And then yeah. let's, let's see what I can do with what I want to do. Yeah. And I think it's important to, to honor those things that you want. I think when we sacrifice our own wants and needs for the service of others only, and I'm speaking from experience, so I'm not just like pulling this out of my ass, but (laughs) it gets, you burn out so fast. And I, for the, you know, the IG quilt fest or whatever day seven, 
was about lessons learned. And like, that's been like my biggest life lesson is saying no and only doing the things that really feel like they're going to be valuable to me as a business person Mm -hmm. or as a quilter or whatever. And so, but as a business owner, it's hard because you're like, okay, well, I need to keep my business going, but also how do I honor myself and all of that? And how do I still make space and time for me to make what I want to make? Mm-hmm. And that's my biggest gripe is that <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm always quilting for other people. So then I just don't really have a lot of time for myself because then I get home and it's like, I have a sewing space. I can't, I can, or but bandwidth. it's like, yeah, <laughs> right. But my bandwidth is very low at that point. It's like, no, I want to get home and hang out with my husband and right watch TV or do all the other things that I want to do. Like, I don't want to only sew. I don't want that to be my entire personality. So it's already takes up a lot of my personality. (laughs) Well, and for me last fall, that's what it was, you know, just like finishing these commissions for Christmas and t-shirt quilts. And it just like, I hit major burnout at the end of December. And I was like, okay, I got to reevaluate. Like, it, this is more, it's great to make money. I'm not making hand over fist money. You know, it's not like I'm making a mortgage over here. Right. Um, It makes me feel good to think like, wow, I am running a business. I am like, people are paying me for this. That's Mm kind of cool because it's not anything I ever thought was possible. Again, I go back to that beginner Lacey and think like, oh, that's not for me. That's Mm -hmm. other people do that. And, you know, my husband just told me last week, he's like, no, you're doing it though. Like you're doing it and you're, you're making strides and you have a name in the industry. Yeah. You should be proud of yourself. And so it's that imposter syndrome of Mm -hmm. like, but why me, you know, but then why not me? (laughs) Right. Yeah. No, I feel that same way. And I was in that same boat too with QuiltCon. Like this isn't, this is not for me, even though I have a long arm quilting business. I make, I, all I do all day is quilt. Like (laughs) why shouldn't I go, you know? And then I felt like, okay, well, since I have the podcast and since the business is getting better now, I think we could go. And then it's like, no, I should have, like, I don't know. It's that same thing. Like I feel it's our age. Yeah. It's for sure our age. (laughs) Yeah, I think because so. I, I definitely like, you know, because I have a sister-in-law, Ashlyn, who comes in and she's been quilting less than two years. She just hit her two-year anniversary and she's running a business and doing patterns and let's do a podcast. And she's just full steam ahead. And I'm looking at her like, how do you have this confidence to just like take it and run? You know, yeah. I don't know if it's just generationally, you know, if it's post-COVID, it the age it's just yeah it's kind of been a mind bending thing but also really great like you said through therapy and like learning Mm -hmm. kind of what's good for me like no I can I can do this I can be here absolutely so when you made your first t-shirt quilt what how did you learn to work with t-shirts did you go online did you take a class like did you just kind of figure it out yeah so I um my nephew had like 80 jerseys he had so many jerseys (laughs) and um my and it's funny too because like I said my mom taught me very traditionally Mm -hmm. and it was like the first time I said I want this to look like I wanted the quilt to look like you just threw a bunch of like it's in the middle of the corner of a a high school kids room right like oh there's his jerseys like he just threw it in the corner it's kind of what I wanted to picture it so when I approached my mom I'm like look I have all these jerseys I read online, you just like buy this interfacing and then you just like cut it up and you just do it. And I said, I want it to look like a pile of jerseys in a quilt. And she's like, okay. And so it was her first time kind of going a little bit non-traditional as well. Yeah. So I literally just like put it on the floor. We came up with like two different sizes of (laughs) like sizes of t-shirts and interfaced them and then just started cutting. And then like, fitting pieces in where they fit and the end result ended up really cool we like I had some sideways I had some upside down oh wow so not necessarily I didn't want it to be like shirt 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 I wanted to be like a little bit more chaotic yeah and when I approached my sister-in-law and said like look this is kind of my vision she's like I don't care what you do because they're going to go in the garbage anyway so being able to have that freedom on the first t-shirt quilt was really great And now when I make t-shirt quilts in my order form, I say, you understand that these are not going to be like, it's not going to be just like straight up. They are going to be a little bit sideways and upside down. So essentially I just would 
a lot like improv quilting, right? Where you just put a fabric up and then, okay, how big does that need to be? And then I just would kind of piece it together. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. that quilt ended up being almost a king size quilt, which, you oh. know, when you're making a t-shirt quilts, you're just like, this thing's huge, but yeah. he's six, five and he loved it. And it was so really he needs a big quilt. Yeah, so he needed <laughs> it big. And I think I, I remember showing it to the family because it wasn't a big deal for me. Right. It was right. just like, well, yeah, like that was not that hard. Like, why are people going to pay me for this kind of thing? And my family was like, no, you need to do this. You need to, you need to have people pay you for this. And I'm like, no, nah, it's not that big a deal. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But and it, it is. All that year later when people started reaching out to me and saying like, I saw your t-shirt quilt. Can you make me one? I'm like, sure. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I guess. Yeah. Yep. It's so fun. Yeah. I don't, well, like my mom has been sewing like all of her life. And so she's but didn't really get into quilting until like a couple of years before I did. So she has so much experience with other fabrics and different, you know, apparel sewing and home decor and all these kinds of things. So like her approach to quilting has like really helped me, but like the only reason like either of us feels good about doing t-shirt quilts is because of that knowledge of like knowing how to work with other fabrics okay. and like knowing that you need the stabilizer and all this stuff, like she already knew all that stuff mostly. And so we were able to jump in and there's like, we get a, that's like our biggest request is memory or clothing or t-shirt quilts because people don't do them. Like, yeah. You're like, yeah. I can't find anybody who's willing to do this for me. And we're like, we'll do it. It's like one of the easiest things for us to do. We love it. Like, and we're like you, where we don't just do a grid of t-shirts. We like make a fun Thing, something oh. fun to look at like something yeah. uh, like a visual journey of mm -hmm. of the t-shirts not just like we're gonna cut everything the same size and border right. it out exactly. border it yeah yeah totally. which is fine there's nothing wrong with it it's just boring it's like <laughs> it is and that's yeah that's kind of where I was like I I want it to be something better yeah I, like it can be so much more special than just a grid of t-shirts and there's been times where like that was the appropriate thing to do with that right. project it's what the person wanted but nine times out of ten they're like whatever you want to do is fine and we're like it's so great it's like my you. favorite thing ever yeah. <laughs> like, yeah I trust you I'm like I know you do because you should yeah <laughs> I mean like, there's pictures on my website you can see what they end up looking like it's the same pattern over and over again yeah yeah it's it's been really fun because since that one t-shirt quilt there hasn't been anything I haven't tried. I, mm -hmm. I'm always up for a challenge. I think that's one of the funnest parts when they're like, hey, I have this. Can you work with it? And I'm like, I don't see why not. Like yeah. there isn't anything I haven't been able to put in a quilt. I just yeah. had one with karate belts. She's, yeah. She's like, can you add this? I'm like, I can. Like these are a couple options, you mm -hmm. know, and it ended up turning out pretty cool. I'm like, obviously it'll be a little bit more thick on those areas. Yeah. You know, letting them know exactly what's going to happen. But mm -hmm making those first cuts on like karate belts, or I had one that was a dance costume quilt. Oh, yeah. It was like, she didn't want it as like a blanket to use. She wanted it strictly as memories. So I ended up making the quilt and then applicating most of the dance pieces on top. Yeah. And it was heavy and I bet. beautiful. And <laughs> it was, it was one of my favorite projects. Um, because I, I always, am like, there's nothing I can't use. Yeah. Yeah. I like, I definitely, I used to be so scared of them and be like, I don't know what I'm doing, but the more I've like, you know, obviously my mom help has helped me with that. Cause she knows how to, she's like, Oh, you just do this. Like, you just have to work with it this way or whatever. Yeah. And we're the same way. We're like, whatever you send us, we'll do our best. Like, I mean, yeah, we've made some crazy quilts, but you know, it's like robes. And I'm like, I don't think that's actually a good idea. You know, there's like certain fabrics that we're kind of like, well, we can use this in a certain way, but it's not going to be a right square in your quilt, yeah. like kind of thing. Cause it's like, and the... then I'm like, should I use it as a backing? And then I'm like, not really like realistically, I'm going to yeah. use this much of your robe. How about you just keep the robe, you know, yeah. like definitely yeah. looking at the pieces and saying, yeah what's best for this mm -hmm. you know? and yeah that communication is key too but it's also as a people pleaser can be really hard <laughs> for sure is that like how has that process been for you coming up with your method of communication do you find yourself 
initially like wanting to say yes, but then having to backpedal in your head before you respond or like, yeah, how has that been for you? That's a good question. Um, at the beginning of all of this in 2021, I definitely was yes to all the things. Um, but I will say in the journey, it's helped me feel validated that I know what I'm doing, especially with the commission quilts, like Mm -hmm. it's helped, but I am definitely now at the point where I'm a little bit more stingy about saying no, um, because it, wades out the bottom feeders, you Mm -hmm. know, it wades out. I find that the people who are looking for the cheapest option are often the most people that are the most picky. Yeah. And so you have people who will pay your prices. They say, I trust you. Yeah. And you have a way more freedom. Um, I've also noticed in the beginning of my journey, I was way over communicative. Like I was very much, what do you think of this? And what do you think of this? And how about this? And what about this pattern? And what, and non-quilters don't want that quilters don't want that right like I have this quilt she's like I don't care what you put on it and I'm like you really don't care she's like I really don't care (laughs) I'm like and in the past I would say well about this and my reasoning and I would kind of over explain why I was thinking it nobody needs that nobody needs that mental gymnastics on them because that's why they hired you to do it yeah no, I'm sure. getting better. It's therapy has helped, but yeah, <laughs> therapy comes in clutch for that. Cause yeah. like, I'm the same. I'm an over explainer and I feel like I need to justify everything I do, yeah. but I'm like, and you're right. It's like the people who are like, ah, that's expensive. I'm like, no shit, Sherlock. Like, <laughs> yeah. this is a lot of work. Like I'm not doing this for free for one. And for two, you clearly don't understand the value of what I'm doing. Right. And so the people you're right, the people who are willing to pay, they understand what they're asking for or the level of value of what they're asking for. And so they're going to pay what it takes to get the thing they want because they can't do it for themselves. And they somehow also value the work that goes into it. So it's like that finding that medium is like, and they do say like, here, you're the artist. I trust you, you know, yes. like they drop it off. And I've noticed with timelines too, like I would get really frustrated with myself if I had a quilt and I had, you know, six orders I need to get done because it's graduation season and I'm not mm-hmm. turning him out fast enough. I'm, I apologize. Your quilt's next. And they're like, no, I don't care. Like yeah. as long as I get it before like May 1st, I don't care. So I would put this unwanted and undue pressure on me of mm-hmm. they're expecting it to get done in two days and they're not expecting it to get get done in two days they understand that it's going to take time and and oftentimes having it for a little bit like yeah could I get a quilt done in one or two days sure I could they don't need to know that (laughs) right right yeah well but that's the thing too is like if you're working at that pace which sometimes I am which sucks but it's it's exhausting it's hard because you're just like it does take creativity and it does like you can't rush certain parts. Like it just takes how long it takes to sew a seam. It takes how long it takes to cut fabric out. It takes, you know, it's like everything has its own like time frame, and some things are like, oh, this is really basic and easy and it can go really fast. And then other times it it becomes more complex because once you start working with the fabrics and with the, you know, if, especially if it's a t-shirt or memory quilt, you start working with the items and you're like, oh, okay. Like, Yeah. yeah, You got to take more things into consideration. And and yeah, I find the same thing. The only timeline thing that pisses me off is Etsy. So (laughs) because once somebody places their order, it's like, okay, now we're on a time crunch and we we're like, okay, 10 weeks, but that's like, you know, for a ship date, that's the longest you can set on Etsy. And even still, sometimes that's not enough for certain projects. And it's like, yeah but we get dinged for it so it's like oh. so hard I know that's why like Etsy was really when I did Etsy in 2021 I was like I don't know if this is where I want to be like it's hard yeah. to manage that side of it because really again is. I didn't jump into this going I'm going to start a business here's right. branding material here's my website here's you know I, I look back and think I wish I would have changed my name you know like it's, it's messy quilts and sometimes people don't really know what that is and I'm I'm considering changing it but people know me by that and everything's you know and so yeah. it's I think if I could go back to 2021, Lacey, I probably would have had a little bit better business model going into sure. it. Mm-hmm. But at the same point, I'm proud of myself for being mm-hmm. here because I don't know if 2015 Lacey would have been like, dude, you have people, you have strangers asking you to make quilts. Like that wasn't ever in my realm of quilting. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard. And like, it's hard to be on a platform like Etsy because although that's where most of my business comes from, I'm also extremely frustrated by them. So it's like, 
how do I get people to go to my website and order through me directly? You know, it's so, hard. Yeah. A lot of Instagramming, which is a whole nother beast, right? Being yeah. like we talked about social yeah. media is moving so fast. And mm-hmm. I just, since Christmas, I've just, I've kind of taken a plunge in, well, unfortunately for me is I had a video of me zigzag stitching go semi semi viral it never hit a million views but it's up there yeah and it had and it literally hit the spaces of the internet world that like didn't need to be there so my follower count like doubled Mm -hmm. in like a month which people like are you happy about it yeah I I shouldn't complain about followers but the followers don't necessarily equal business right because they're not there to follow you for your business they're there they're a lot of them are bots right so it's like impressive follower count engagement's really low and so that's the part of the business that I am really struggling with as a 40 year old is Mm -hmm. what does that look like and how do I manage all that yeah yeah I'm I'm in the same boat it's like that's part of my job is the social media for the business but I'm like I don't know how to I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing, (laughs) you know? And it's like all these people who pump out reels every day. And I'm just like, I literally don't have, again, the, the bandwidth to, to even think about, you know, it's great that I even take a picture of any quilt that comes through the door, you know, it's like, remembering to post them that's a whole other story you know it's like and then I feel like I'm redundant I'm saying the same stuff I'm posting the same reels I'm maybe yeah. we just need to hire 20 year olds like you and me it's just well yeah. hire consistent we can share and they can do it <laughs> like you do my socials here's all the stuff just I don't I'm, understand it I'm a dinosaur over here yeah yeah am I on Instagram constantly yes, yes. but do I know how to use it no <laughs> that's where I'm at like just all the scrolling but none of the payoff <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's tricky, but ugh, it's like, I don't know. I like, I made this podcast for the very reason that we're talking about, just like trying to find that, like, who are my people? Cause I'm yeah. not, I don't like the traditional minded. I mean, let's face it, older ladies who <laughs> look their nose down at you and treat you like you're a literal idiot for making like modern quilts or wanting to do things differently. And I am not young. (laughs) I'm not young. (laughs) So (laughs) I actually looked at my hair today. I'm like, am I going to, I think I'm just going to let my grays come in. I think it's time to be done doing my hair. Yeah. That's not the age of that. I've got a gray. She's up here somewhere. I named her Lawanda and I'm like, I'm just, I haven't dyed my hair since like 20. Oh, good for you, dude. No, like 2008, 2009. That's awesome. And now that I'm starting to see a gray here and there, I'm like, it's just, I, what am I supposed to do about it? Like, I'm literally not going to spend the money to have someone cover it up for me. Like, no. get what you get. Grown out at <laughs> some point. No, yeah. I actually had an older woman when I showed them the lips quilt. Yeah. You'd drawn it up and I was so excited about the quilt because it was my first thing and I'm like she's asking me to make this it's a new technique like this is so exciting she mm-hmm. actually looked at it and went uh <laughs> yeah oh, the design not even the actual quilt just the design so rude and like, yeah and so it's like I definitely in those early days really got in my head and I'm realizing now how in my head I was mm-hmm and still kind of am, it's a little scary for me to start making my own stuff again. Yeah. Um, I think that's partly why I I did a lot of commission quilts last year was it's these people appreciated. This is here, take it, you have it. And now I'm realizing, okay, let's, let's bring it back to Lacey. Let's, yeah. I, I don't, I'm almost scared of making something for myself in fear of judgment. You yeah. Know? Yeah. It is. It can be scary. Cause it's like, you make it and you want to show it off because you're proud of it. But then, yeah, what kind of, how are people going to yeah. receive it? The people you care about too. And even the people you don't care about, but like mostly how are the people you care about going to receive it? And probably great. They're probably going to be like, wow, Lacey, yeah. that's really freaking cool. For sure. <laughs> but it, I, I'm with you though. It's like, I want to make, I have all these like patterns I want to make. And I have all these fabrics, but I haven't done a thing with them because I'm again, I'm terrified. Like, what if I made a bad choice and my friends don't like it? I'm like, <laughs> 
<laughs> they're gonna like it and if they don't who gives a shit it's for me like <laughs> right who cares it's my thing yeah and yeah. just being that in between of because the modern designers coming out now like watching yeah. what Ashlyn produces is just yeah. phenomenal I'm just like how do I compare with that and then I have to center myself and go that's not that's not what this is about that's not no. what the community is about it's not about comparing it's but unfortunately that's what unfortunately some of the older generations was is that it was very much well I know how to quilt I'm blessing you how to quilt mm-hmm. it's this really secret society and now you can learn everything on YouTube right it's not this secret generational yeah thing it's everybody can do it and it should be that everybody can learn it and everybody should be in their own lane you know yeah 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 for sure so in your ideal situation, no fears, no time constraints, like what do you want to make for you? Oh man, that's a <laughs> heavy question. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Therapy. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's funny. More. That's actually a question that Ashlyn asks me all the time. Really? Yeah. She, she's been really helpful for me. I made a black and white quilt, um, that got rejected from quilt con, not last mm-hmm. year, but the year before. Mm-hmm. And that hit me pretty hard. Um, part of it was that I put one quilt in, it didn't get in Ashlyn. It was her first quilt con and she got two in. Mm-hmm. And so that it was hard, right? Like it was, I had to look a lot internally in myself and just say, it's not the reflection of quilt con of if I'm a good enough quilter, right. And Ashlyn, like you've met her, she's mm-hmm. already has an artistic ability anyway. So for her to find a medium and flourish is really beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, since my story has been very much with the traditional quilters in my brain, I've been very limited on what I'm able to do. So, mm-hmm. um, I have a quilt that I just designed a couple days ago that I'm really hoping to produce this year. <laughs> I'm really <laughs> excited um it's actually my I got a tattoo in quote at quote oh yeah Um, cute and so I'll probably make something with that block to just kind of like jump start what I want to do like my voices as a just as a person and not necessarily to compare to the younger generations like you know you never want to come in and be like I'm better than you Um, but just to find my validity in myself is sort of my goal this year I I'm taking much less custom quilting I've Mm -hmm. you know I'm not doing that anymore and like I said I'm just only taking what I can to manage to kind of keep the doors open this year and just really trying to recenter what quilting means to me yeah yeah I love that And, and you're designing like you know what you want to make. And I think that's so cool because I think I get stuck where I'm like, I can't, I'm not a designer. So like I find patterns I love, but then I'm like, but do I love that pattern? Do I want, you know, it's like the constraints, but I think that when you can kind of bring your own, like design the thing that you want to see come to life. Yeah. Probably like releases you from any expectations too from of, of the the designer themselves because you're the designer you're the right. you're the decider in that sense also mm-hmm. because you get to ultimately make all the decisions on how that final product looks and I think you know you can do that no matter what but yeah that's really and, I, cool. and I know the year that I entered my quilt under quilt con it was because Ash said, Hey, let's enter quilt. Let's enter quilts. Like, yeah. I'm like, and I told her, I said, no, that's not, that's not what I do. Like, I can't do that. That's mm-hmm. for other people. That's, that's something that I attend. Why would I be part of it? So I entered it. I finished a quilt and entered it. And I look back now and think, did I really want to enter? Was I really mentally prepared or was I doing it out of, oh yeah, let's just do it. It's no big deal, you know, kind yeah. of thing. And I think now going into it, having a little bit more intentionality around what are my, what's my purpose yeah, stuff that I want to make myself and what's my purpose. Now, granted there are, I'm sure there are people that enter stuff into quilt con that's like, oh yeah, I'm going to enter these five and see what happens. Yeah. But to me in my journey, as far as quilt con and the traditional quilting and where I'm at now Mm -hmm. is I never felt like I was good enough to be in quilt con. So Mm -hmm. getting rejected was like, oh, see, I told you I'm not good enough, but I didn't enter it under the understanding of, no, I'm a great quilter. I'm going to see if this gets in and if it doesn't, it's fine. Right. And so now having a little bit better outlook on it 
if that day comes again, or I decide to enter a quilt, it's going to be a little bit more out of, no, I'm great. And it doesn't matter what they say. I cared too much what they thought back then. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And to tell quilters, like do your own voice, like don't let anybody tell you what's wrong or right. Like, you yeah. know, what's right for you. Yeah. Yeah. And ultimately like, you know, and I did an episode on quilt shows because the local guild I'm in the Boise Basin quilters, we have a big quilt show in the fall every year. And, you know, everybody's like, you should enter, you should enter. And I'm like, what, what if I don't want to They're like, just do it? It's so great. And I did a whole episode on, you know, on it because I was in the judging room. I was a scribe for the judges and we hire, um, NACQJ judges. Like, so they're nationally certified. They're like, wow. they know their stuff. Um, and that process being in the room made it a little less scary to me. Cause I'm like, Oh, but also at the end of the day, it's like, are you quilting because you want to be judged or are you quilting because you just want to make stuff right. that you like and that's all that matters to you? Right. And can there be an in-between? I'm sure there is. Like, I know not all of the people who entered in QuiltCon um, only quilt for QuiltCon, you right. know, it's like, right. but- and, and Ash definitely wants to quilt to get critiqued. Yeah. Like she, that's like her jive. Like she loves that. And I definitely applaud her for that. Cause I am not like that. You know, no. I'm definitely the people pleaser in that way of just yeah. like, I don't know if I could take the rejection, you know? Yeah. But that's, what's cool about seeing that next generation coming up is mm-hmm. they are very fired up to like, no, help me get better. Help me. And maybe that's because they didn't necessarily have a traditional quilter teaching them. They're Over all their shoulder like, being like, your points yeah, are not, you're not you're doing that right. Or, yeah. <laughs> like get, yeah. get out of here like <laughs> yeah I think there's definitely a different mindset coming from like that if you know younger ish way of thinking or like less traditional way of thinking of like no I'm making this because I like it and I've built my skills so I'm good at it like there's yeah. no questions in the back of those people's heads saying like right they don't have that granny in the back of their <laughs> head going I don't know <laughs> I don't know <laughs> like or uh yeah uh. <laughs> that's like the last thing you want to hear when you're showing somebody look what I made and they're like oh uh. <laughs> like what? um let's try that again and you're gonna be nice <laughs> you have to talk to the boomers like you talk to two-year-olds you know like yeah. can we raise those words please <laughs> yeah I, I wonder how many modern quilters are like first generation quilters now yeah like, just because I, I never really connected that till just now that like we've had critics you and I have had critics (laughs) we've had enough critics I don't need judges to tell me what's wrong with my quilt I have my family to tell me what's wrong with my quilts right (laughs) yeah it's and that's even funny too because even though my mom's been a sewist like her whole life the only time she's ever she ever critiques anything I make is when I ask her for it or That's she'll true. never point out flaws. She'll never be like, Ooh, I don't know your points. Like, but she's, she's young. She's a young, like she's yeah. a Gen X, like she's not a boomer. Oh, so she's, she's golden then. Yeah. So she, we're okay in that, in that right. regard, but, but she, you know, she learned from her grandma, like, but also she's always just been like, like she knows the, the basic skills and she knows how to like follow a pattern and do all the things, but she's always just been like, yeah, I can figure that out. And like, that's just so cool. Makes shit. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> um, my mom too. Yeah. So that like that helps. It's kind of nice, like, to have that attitude more than like a super like nitpicky, snarky person who's yeah. like, "Well, you're not doing it right." And I'm like, oh, <laughs> I can do what I want. And <laughs> now, like, passing that my like, I posted for the scrappy IG quilt fest day was my sister because it's not something I did, but it was like, I, we encouraged her to learn to make a quilt because she wanted this like cute scrappy hearts, whatever. And we're like, okay, here's how it works. And she's like, okay. And so she sat down and would come or, you know, she'd come up to the studio and she'd work on little bits at a time. And we just showed her how to how to use steam a seam, how to, you know, applique things, how to use a blanket stitch, how to do a quarter yep. inch seam allowance. And, you know, my mom helped her long arm it, but, um, no, I did actually, I helped her long arm that one. Um, and so we got it finished up for her, you know, it's like, but she did the dirty work of it, you know, cause yeah. we're like, no, you're going to, if you yeah. want this quilt, you're going to make it. Yeah. 
<laughs> but yeah, just like... that like the her only apprehension was learning the machine but we have a 70 70 770 qe yeah the it, bernina said the yeah yeah so i just had one i actually just shelved Ooh. it because i just got a new machine oh, yeah, yeah i saw your new one yeah yeah we um that's our the 770 is our newer one but um we did learn on for that one like, yeah for the, yeah i had she's... a new new quilter show up and i'm like hey just push the pedal and then the foot goes down she's like what i know <laughs> Do you want to borrow it? Cause it's pretty amazing to learn on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Automatic yeah. Cutter. yeah. Yeah. So nice. It's funny. Cause like, we also have a 535. So switching between the two, cause like we thought like the 535 was so fancy compared to what we were sewing on before. And then we got the 770 where we're like, Oh, oh. this is an upgrade. Like <laughs> this, <laughs> this girl's fancy. Um, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, but once she figured out the buttons and everything, then she would just like so, which was so great anyway. So, and then my niece is also wanting to like kind of dabble in quilting and she Yay. helped my mom design a quilt for herself again, using all the scraps and she sewed all the bits, like all the blocks together. And then we long armed it for her. And now she's got her very own quilt that she designed. And see, and that's what's so, cr- that's what's so cool though, is like the people that are teaching the new people now is mm-hmm. like, do what you want. Like my yeah. friend just, she's like, well, here's my pattern. And she's like, I don't really love this pattern because it was hard to read. I'm like, okay, so just do it this way. She's like, you can do that. I'm like, so yeah. I'm teaching her to just like, do what you want. Whereas we t- were taught, you have to follow this pattern. Right. You cannot be not this pattern. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's yeah. going to be fun to see where the quilting community goes in the next even 10 years. Yeah. It's moving yeah. pretty fast. But. It is moving really fast, but I think it's. I think most of it's for the better. I think most of it is in the interest of making it more accessible and more approachable for everyone versus the select few who are 60 plus years old and make $65,000 plus a year in retirement and can do whatever they want. It's like, Mm -hmm. but what if I'm a stay at home mom or what if I'm a working parent and I want to still make beautiful things. Like I can't do it in the traditional way. Like Not I even have really. to find shortcuts. I have to find the ability to make it on a budget or use my clothes or okay. so it's like, it's interesting to see. I think there was like a, you know, more DIY kind of pull what you have out of your closet moment. And then it shifted to like, all new all the time. You must only buy these certain brands or you're not cool. And now it's shifting back again, I think, to like a mixture, like use the fabrics you love also with your scraps, your, your scraps yeah. or the sheets out of your closet. Or, you know, it's like people are, and I want to see more of that, I think, because I think that's more approachable. It's not feasible for a lot of people, especially right now, like financially to go to the no fabric store and buy all new quilting cotton for every single project. No, I mean, that's, that's what we talk about a lot on our podcast is that I have a very small stash, which is partly why I don't make a lot of my own quilts. Yeah. It's just like me going down to a quilt store and buying fabric overwhelms me. Just mm-hmm. that process alone is really overwhelming. Yeah. And I find such joy in using clothes, you know? And so mm-hmm. there's a part of me that's like this quilt that I want to make, um, the woman sewing through the fog. I love following her because she has, a lot of quilts that she's like, I just repurpose a lot of things and they're beautiful art quilts. And I'm like, yeah. I really like where you're at. And I can't say that I, I'm in this world of like sustainability and like, I'm going to preach it from the rooftops. That's definitely not who I am, but the idea of not purchasing more and the consumerism around that yeah, really comforting and being able to make quilts with t-shirts that's usable. Okay. How can we move this into the quilting world as well? Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited. Yeah. That's so cool. Well, I'm excited to see what you make for you <laughs> Thank and you. not for other people. And <laughs> you and a lot of other people. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I think it's, it's fun too. like this kind of newer side, more modern, I don't know, whatever side of the quilt world where it's like, especially when you find your people, it's like the best hype crew in the world. Yeah. And it feels more like, okay, I can do anything I want because I've, these people have my back and I can ask a question. I'm not going to get laughed at or told I'm stupid, or I can't believe you would X, Y, Z. It's like, 
I'm going to get an answer to my question. For sure. And support. And I, I guild hopped a lot in 2015 to 2019. Mm-hmm. We had a guild in our area and it just didn't ever fit. And then I finally joined Salt Lake Guild um, last year with Ash. Cause Ash was like, do you go to a guild? I'm like, I've been to it a couple of times, but I just don't know how I fit. She's like, come on, you're going with me. And I had to get through those first couple of meetings of feeling like I don't belong here because yeah. I do belong here. Right. Cause people are making these incredible things. Yeah. And again, getting in my own mind. And so being consistent in the guild has really helped to like mm-hmm. feel that camaraderie around. No, you are part of us. You, yeah. You're good. You have a place with us. You can sit yeah. with us. Um, so it, it is important to find your people. Yeah, it really is. And it, it can be hard, but they're out there. You just have to be willing to, I think that's the other part is like being willing to step outside of the like bubble of your own environment to be like, Hey, want to be friends <laughs> or hey can you like, like yeah yeah <laughs> it's like oh, that's fine wait. I'll just go back home it's fine <laughs> wait you're 42 can we be friends <laughs> yeah right? you feel like little kids again in the neighborhood like oh you're new here let's be friends it's like yeah. it was like that easy of, yeah it's totally that easy I think a yeah. lot of us make it more in our head than not so if anybody ever sees us out in public yeah. We're just as introverted. So come say hi. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. I'm like, just come, just come up to me. And also that's a really hard thing to tell intro- introverts to do because it's like just as much as I'm introverted and don't really want to walk up to a stranger, but I'm like, no, you come, t- come to me. It's- Especially people you look up to. I think yeah. there's just that industry of like, you learn from people online mm-hmm. and there are people now I feel like I'm in the point in my life where people are asking me questions and I, I don't know when that transition happened where the student became the teacher, Yeah, but it's like this big fulfillment thing where I'm like, no, I'm still promise. I'm still just like a goofy, like really yeah. introverted, shy person. So don't think I'm better than you. Like I, yeah, you ask me all the questions you want, you know, like yeah. I'm here no. for you. So. For sure. And like, even, even for me, like, okay, I did get some stranger recognitions that like they're listeners, but they're like, can I take a selfie with you? I love your show. And I was like, I'm going to, I'm crying. I don't know. I, I just like looked at my mom and she was like, like, (laughs) she was like telling my dad and my brother's like, gosh, she got recognized. It was so cute. I was like, cute. I'm not cute. What is happening? (laughs) But I promise, like, and if, I mean, you met me in person, so yeah. you know, but like, I am, I'm just like a goof, like awkward. So I am too. I, I feel like I just don't even know what to say to people. And then I like, I leave and I'm like, why did I say that? That feels that so dumb. Why did I say that? <laughs> like, oh my God, they're never going to listen to the show again. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, I mean, it seems like everybody's still here. So yeah. that's great news. But yeah, it's like. I want to be open to allowing other people the space to learn in the way that they need to learn. Cause we don't all learn the exact same. And, and I think that's kind of, if I can like loop that together with my teaching background and like knowing what it's like to be in the education system, it's that same kind of group of people who are mad about the quote unquote new math. And it's not new. It's always, always been there. Just no one ever taught you how to do it that way. It just doesn't make it new. It's new to you, but it's not new to the universe. And so, um, so sorry that we're giving people options for how to problem solve. Like there's not just one right answer for everything. And like, well, then it's like, oh wait, that's how I've done math my whole life. Right. Right. Like that's kind of made way more sense to me than my kids coming home doing it. I'm like, well, yeah, that's how I did it. Is that not right? (laughs) Yeah. At least. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, we're just putting into practice those things that have always been there. But I think that's also in the quilting world where, you know, again, there's this generation that's like, there's one right, one right way to quilt. And if you don't quilt that way, then you aren't a real quilter. Yeah. And it's garbage. It's I like angered the internet with my zigzag binding. That yeah. I had people really angry at like, and it was older generation. Like that's yeah. not 
It's not a real quilt. It's not a real binding. It's not a real this. And that's just like, like, then please tell me what it is. It's, I'm touching it. It's like very, it's on top of me as a very quilt. freaking real. <laughs> like a quilt to me. Yeah. You know, and it's yeah. And and I I worry for new quilters if they get anything like that, that they end up quitting. We with our podcast, we've had a couple of re- people reach out and say that. Or like I had a mean comment and I couldn't handle it. So I quit quilting and now I'm back after 10 years. Yeah. I love your I love your show because I have a place with you. I'm like, yeah, you have a place with us because it's Heck just yeah. you do what you need to do. Like I just yeah. it baffles my mind why there's anger and hate around how people quilt it just is just fascinating (laughs) yeah Yeah. and it's like I can understand if it's like coming from a fear of losing their tradition yeah losing the traditional ways but there's so many people that are living in that traditional mind while still also being accepting of the modern movement Right. right and you can do both. You can still love and appreciate and and make all your quilts in the traditional way and also leave yeah. space for people to do both quilting. are true. Yeah. Yeah. Both <laughs> things can be held true at the same time. It's not one or the other. So it's a yes and. Yeah. Yep. And that's the space I try to live in, which is it can be hard sometimes. But I think also trying to step into that more challenges me as a person. And it helps me continue to see where I can grow and see opportunities for me to, to just learn more and not just about myself, but other people. And it's just that willingness to be open that I think skips a lot of people. I know, I know facing (laughs) having a sister-in-law jumping into quilting had to have me face like some pretty hard truths just about like where I stand and what, you know, and it's been really healing at the same point you yeah. know and and like you said finding people who can support you and love you through that process yeah um you know and now I just like I high five everything Ashlyn's doing you know big big jealousy and I know um in Barbie's interview that's kind of where she was saying about her custom quilting that like yeah. for a minute it was hard to see people succeed yeah but that's when you know you need to look at yourself and go okay what what do I need to grow on if if I'm having this much hate towards what people are doing yeah. what do I need to work on in myself yeah, you know, for sure. Everybody it's, has their own lane. Just stay yeah. in your lane and we can all ride the freeway together. You know? Yeah. No, exactly. It's like, and if you change lanes safely for a moment and try it out and you don't like it, then you can get back into your other lane and it's okay. Like it is, it's just like traffic. If you're, if you're moving through in with respect of other people, mm-hmm. then everything's going to be fine. But if you're ignoring other people's path and you're ignoring your own path and making weird left turns in the middle of a five lane freeway, like you're going to hurt somebody right? right. and yourself included, because when you're, when you hurt other people's feelings, you're, it's really just shows that you're hurting on the inside, hundred percent. but it still doesn't make it okay. Still doesn't make me go, you know what? I, that comment doesn't bother me because I know it's just that person's inside pain. Like, no, that person took time to write me an email to let me know that they didn't like me. Like that is rude as hell. Like keep it to yourself. So true. I'm like, well, then this isn't the podcast for you. Keep on moving on. Like, thanks for the unfollow. It's not hard. Like, because that one comment could derail and that's I mean that's what happened to me for a long time for you know it just it derailed my ability to think what I did was even close to valuable and I'm I'm grateful for the last couple years of my guild and Ashlyn Mm -hmm. to just like really help nurture this like little baby bird into like no good and now I'm finally to a place where I'm like no I can I can take up space what I offer I love what I offer and I love giving back to the community and I'm excited to see it grow. So yeah. How exciting. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I've really loved getting to chat with you like this. I mean, again, we quote con, we met each other in person, but then it was just like, two, see you like, in two weeks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like just zoom and pass each other on our way to do other stuff. It's just, it's crazy. Cause it's like, you want to talk to everybody, but at the same time, you can't talk to anybody. So it's like, <laughs> like longer than two seconds. Like, yeah, and you're hey, I'll call you later. Yeah. 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 But well, yeah, I'm excited that we did this and I love seeing your work. You do great work and I love your guys's podcast. Like it's so fun when Ashlyn's like, yeah, we're starting a podcast. I was like, what? 
<laughs> I know. Like, oh, it, it was random. She like asked me like, what do you think about starting a podcast? I'm like, yeah, okay. Ha ha. And then like, she's like, no, I'm serious. I'm like, okay, whatever. And then we started it. I'm like, oh dang, we really started a podcast. Some days it yeah. doesn't feel real. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm in that same boat. I'm like, is this really what I do? Yes, I know. it is. Okay. And All people right. kind of like it. So I'll keep, so I'll keep doing it. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's so fun. And that's like a funny thing too. Cause it's like, I hear about other quilting podcasts and I'm like, oh, and then it's like kind of that jealousy, like, well, what are they doing? Like I need to, and I'm like, no, 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 no. I need to stay again, stay in my lane. I'm what I'm doing is just fine. Like I don't need to be anybody else, but, yeah, well, and you are doing amazing work. We're all doing amazing work. We're, yeah. helping the, we're helping the community heal. Yeah. Between we are the inner, we're the mediator generation. Like yeah. that's what we've decided we are. <laughs> yeah. I think so. We have to learn how to bridge that, that divide of like the yeah the older generation with the newer generation I can too black and white old meets new yeah I love it the yin and yang of it all but oh great well thanks again and um so you have your website messyquilts.com messyquilts.com yep and your messy quilts on instagram okay I will put links to those places in the show notes and otherwise we'll just keep chatting through instagram and hopefully we get to hang out in person I'm trying to figure out how to get Ashlyn up here to teach a class so well, I want to come up too, because I want to check out Boise. So well, I have an Airbnb in my house. You can come stay in my house. That would be so amazing. Uh, I'm putting feelers out to leave Utah because I just feel like it just, mm. yeah, we looked at Boise for a while, but yeah, I don't know. We can talk. It's pretty much Utah 2.0. So that's what I figured. And so I'm it's... like, well, if I'm going to move, I should move, you know, but yeah. Yeah. Well, it's good. Either way, you should still come visit me. So <laughs> it'll be fun. I'd love to come visit <laughs> Okay, well, we'll chat again soon. And thanks so much. Yeah.